Hello, Chemistry 20. This is our fourth lesson in the Solutions Unit. This is Dilutions. In this lesson, we will look at the difference between stock and diluted solutions. We will look at the dilution formula, how to dilute a solution, and we'll go through three examples. Stock versus diluted solutions. A stock solution has a known concentration in moles per liter. It is typically purchased from a company and has a very high concentration. A diluted solution is made from a stock solution by simply adding water. When you add water, it then will have a lower concentration. By adding water to the stock solution, you can create a diluted solution with the reduced concentration. Let's look at the units for concentration, which are moles per liter. If we add water to a solution, we are going to increase the volume, which is the denominator. As a result, this would decrease the concentration of the solution. Dilution formula is C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. C1 is the initial concentration in moles per liter. This usually refers to the stock solution. C2 is final concentration in moles per liter. This is the solution that you want to make. It will be the diluted solution. V1 is your initial volume. It usually refers to the amount of stock you need. And V2 is the final volume. This is typically the final volume of the solution that you want to make. Please note that V1 and V2 must be in the same units. They can be in milliliters or they can be in liters as long as they are the same unit. Diluting a solution requires very precise laboratory equipment. It requires a volumetric pipette and a volumetric flask. Let's learn how to dilute a solution. This is the stock solution of sodium chloride that we will be diluting. Make sure to pour the stock solution into another container before inserting the pipette into the solution. This is because you do not want to contaminate your stock solution. In this case, I'm using an Erlenmeyer flask. Notice that I have clearly labeled the flasks to adhere to proper laboratory safety protocol. To prepare our dilute solution, we will take a 10 milliliter aliquot of our stock solution using a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette. To use the pipette, place the pipette in the liquid to be collected. Squeeze the pipette bulb and allow the liquid to rise up the pipette. You should allow the liquid to pass the line marked on the pipette, but before the bulb. Remove the bulb and place your other thumb over the end creating a seal, and slowly release just the corner of your thumb, allowing the liquid to exit so that the meniscus is directly on the line marked on the pipette. This takes some practice, and you may need to use the bulb to pull more liquid into the pipette again. Never pipette by mouth. Once you have the exact amount of liquid required in the pipette, Hold your thumb firmly over the end and transfer the pipette to a new volumetric flask. In this case, a clean 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Allow all of the liquid to flow out of the pipette. Do not use the bulb to force the liquid out, as pipettes are designed to deliver the exact amount of liquid, and there may be a small amount of liquid remaining at the end. Remove the pipette and follow the same procedure as before, filling the volumetric flask with solvent Again, monitoring the meniscus until the exact volume is reached. You've now learned how to prepare a dilute solution from a stock solution. The reason why a volumetric pipette and flask are used to dilute a solution is because they have a very narrow neck. The smaller the neck on the glassware, the more accurate the measurement. 
Example number one. What is the concentration of a solution if 30.0 milliliters of a 1.50 moles per liter sodium chloride solution is diluted to a new volume of 1.30 liters? Pause the video and attempt this example. We are given the initial volume and concentration of the solution. And then it says we are diluting it to a new volume of 1.30 liters. And we are trying to find the new concentration. Therefore, we're looking for C2. Also note that our initial volume is in milliliters. So therefore, we are going to convert our final volume to milliliters. You could also convert both to liters. If we rearrange our dilution formula, we are left with C2 equals V1 times C1 divided by V2. And if we input our data as a result, the new concentration of the solution is 0 0.0346 moles per liter. Example number two. You need 450 milliliters of a 0 0.16 moles per liter solution of sodium hydroxide. All you have available is a 2.0 moles per liter stock solution of sodium hydroxide. How do you make the required solution? Pause the video and attempt this example. If we look at the values that are provided to us, we have the initial concentration of the stock solution. And we know we need to make a solution with a concentration of 0 0.16 moles per liter, and we need a total of 450 milliliters of that new solution. As a result, we need to find the volume of the stock solution required to make the new diluted solution. We can then rearrange our dilution formula to V1 equals C2 times V2 divided by C1. If we input our values, we are left with 36 milliliters of the stock is required to make the new solution. In order to actually make that solution, we need to take 36 milliliters of the 2.0 moles per liter stock solution then we need to add 414 milliliters of water to then equal our total of 450 milliliters of the new solution that has a concentration of 0 0.16 moles per liter. Example number three. What mass of CuSO4 is present in 10 milliliters of the 0 0.035 moles per liter solution. Pause the video and attempt this example. This question does not require the dilution formula. We are given the volume of a solution and the concentration. We can then start with the volume of the solution and use the concentration to go to moles of copper sulfate. Once we have the moles of copper sulfate, we can then use the molar mass to go to the grams of copper sulfate. The molar mass of copper sulfate is 159.62 grams per mole. We can then start with the volume of the solution in liters and times it by the moles per liter of the solution. This will then put us into moles of copper sulfate. We can then times that value by the molar mass of copper sulfate to get our final answer into grams. As a result, our answer is 0 0.056 grams of copper sulfate is required to make a 10 milliliter solution with a concentration of 0 0.035 moles per liter. Moving forward, 
we will explore solubility and equilibrium.